Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is John Crystal. I'm a past president of CINP and, and professor and chair of psychiatry at Yale University. And I'm thrilled today to have the opportunity to uh, interview Professor Gabriella Agabi, who is a professor of psychiatry at McGill University and a psychiatrist at McGill uh, University Health Center, and uh, who this year has received the Basic Neuroscience Brain Health Award from the CINP, and I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, Gabriella, could you tell us a little bit about your career and what brought you to, uh, to receive this uh, prestigious award? Uh, yes, I, I start uh, my career by studying medicine, where I graduated in Rome in uh, 1991. Then I start my residency in uh, psychiatry. But after the residency, I was not very happy because I was uh, curious. I want to know more about uh, psychiatric disease, the pathophysiology, the treatment. So I start a PhD in uh, basic research and uh, psychopharmacology. And then I start my career as a PI going uh, through the discovery in uh, psychopharmacology and treatment for mental disease. Well, that's wonderful. Your work has been so important to helping us understand how uh, psychedelic drugs uh, act in the brain. And this is such an exciting area right now as there's so much research uh, trying to uh, capture the therapeutic potential of psychedelic drugs and to understand their risks. Could you say a little bit about how your work has uh, advanced the field and where you think this work is taking us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started to study psychedelics about uh, eight, ten years ago, a little bit for personal curiosity about uh, the power of psychedelics to really change the mind, change the interpretation of suffering, of trauma. And now there is a big explosion in this uh, field, of course. So my research until now is mostly in basic uh, psychopharmacology in uh, laboratory animal models. So what uh, we discover about these psychedelics that on one hand, they work as uh, antidepressant, for example, interacting with the 5-HT1A receptor or with the serotonin transporting receptor, the AMPA, but on the same time, they also activate circuits that are not classically activated by uh, antidepressant or antipsychotic, as the DMN, how, how the salience uh, uh, network. So I think is there the specificity of uh, psychedelics. On one hand, they interact with uh, very well-known receptors, 5-HT2A, for example. But on the other hand, uh, they have uh, the power to activate other circuits that are very important for uh, mental disease. Well, that's mm -hmm. wonderful and so important to the field. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that we will be able to develop non-hallucinatory psychedelic antidepressants? <laughs> this is a $1 million question. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit uh, skeptical. I'm a, a little bit skeptical because uh, I think the power of these drugs and what also the patients uh, tell us is uh, this uh, capacity also of dissociation. And in the dissociation, the patient with the PTSD, for example, with depression, is able also to reinterpret to give a meaning to the suffering to see is uh, suffering from far. I think uh, this uh, characteristic of uh, psychedelics, I think is very important for mental health. I'm not sure if we can uh, dissociate the 5G2A from uh, this uh, capacity to give the dissociation we can have a uh, really uh, psychotropic and therapeutic effect. Well, thanks so much. Congratulations on all that you've accomplished and brought to the field, and congratulations again on this wonderful honor. It's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you, John. Bye.